In this video, I'm going to guide you through preparing a form using Adobe Acrobat Pro. Now, it's important to note that you will need the Pro version for this process. And while I know that there are free tools available online now to make forms, they often come with limitations or hidden costs, or they like make you pay to download or something. So if you want to do it right from the start, and especially if you're handling these types of forms regularly, it's definitely worth investing in the right tools. Acrobat Pro also has a free trial that I'll link below. So if you want to follow along using that and then decide whether or not it's actually worth paying for for what you need, that's one way to do it. But either way, we are using Acrobat Pro for this tutorial. So let's begin by opening up our form. I'm going to use a client review template that I found just on Canva, but you can apply these steps to any document, whether it's something that you created in Microsoft Word or downloaded from an organization, doesn't matter. However you created your form, you're going to want to download or export it in PDF format. So from Canva, I am going to click on the share button, download, I will select PDF standard, and then I can download that. Once you've done that, you'll want to open it up in Adobe Acrobat. From here on the left side of your screen, actually in the top left, you should see this tab that says all tools. You'll want to make sure that that's what you're under. And then we're looking for the option that says prepare a form. If you don't immediately see that in this list, click on that view more link at the bottom. And you may have to scroll down a little bit, but you should see that prepare a form option. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And since we already have our file open, I'm going to go ahead and click create form. So what's cool about this is that it will take the fields that it already recognizes and try to auto assign a field type to it. And we'll go over this in a second. Um, and we'll also double check and make sure that these are correct because it does not always get these correct, but it gives us a starting point. So I'm going to close this tab on the right for now, and let's quickly review some of these field types. So a text field would be obviously for anywhere that you need to type something. Image field, if someone needs to insert an image. We have checkboxes, which Adobe has already tried to identify for us. Radio buttons, which we're going to use for like these yes, no options, usually radio buttons means that like one can be selected at a time, whereas checkboxes, you can select as many as you want. We won't be using a drop down list or a list box in this particular form, but those are options that are available as well. And then something cool is that you could add a button at the bottom of your form if you want someone to be able to download, print, or submit this or anything like that. We have a date field, we have an e-signature field, which we will use down here as well. And then we don't have a barcode on this particular form, but that option is there as well. Now that we know that Adobe has the field types that we need, we can go ahead and start placing these. So I'm going to start with text fields. From here, we can just start clicking everywhere that we want a text field, and then we'll go back and resize these how we need them. Perfect. Next, let's do our radio button fields. So over all of these circles, I'm just going to click and place one of these radio buttons. Great. Next, we need a date field. And then we need a signature field. All right, so now we can go through and start formatting these fields for what we need. So for the name, phone, and email, I'm just going to adjust these boxes to actually fit our design. Same with this address field. And same with these open answer fields. Okay. 
All right, so let's go back up to the top where this address field is. So for the name, phone, and email that people are entering, they really only need one line for that, and it's likely that the information they enter is going to fit in these boxes we provided just fine. However, for this address box, it's likely that people will need multiple lines to actually enter their address. If we leave it how it is by default, when we go down to the bottom left and preview this form, if we start typing something in, you can see that we are not able to enter multiple lines in any way. If this address was even longer, this information starts getting cut off at the end. So let's go ahead and fix this. I'm going to exit the preview. And then you can either double click or right click on the text box you want to edit and click properties. From here, we're going to select multi-line. We're going to uncheck the scroll long text because it's unlikely that someone will have an address that's that long that we need a scroll bar for it. And let's go ahead and limit this to, let's say 200 characters. We can go ahead and close this. And now when we preview this form again, we can start typing in an address and this time it will let us use multiple lines. Again. Great, so let's move on to the rest of the form. Just to keep this consistent, I'm going to go back down to those other text boxes and do the same thing. So we'll do multi-line, and for these, I actually will leave the scroll long text enabled, and we won't limit the number of characters. I'll do the same for this box. And now when we preview these, if we just start typing, you can see that if this text gets super long, this scroll bar appears. And same for this text box. Let's move on to the next easiest ones, which are these check boxes. So with check boxes, any number of these can be selected at the same time. So in other words, if you check this one, it's not going to uncheck any of the other options. So as the form currently is, it has automatically identified these checkboxes, and when we check them, it fills them in with a square. But let's say that you don't like that square or you want them to be true check marks or some other pattern. What we're going to do is double click or right click on these, and then under options, you have the choice of what shape you want this to be filled with. So we can use a check on this one. We can use a circle. We'll just, we'll select all of them so that you can see what they look like. Diamond, we'll leave that one as a square and we'll do a star for this one. You can also select whether or not you want a box checked by default when someone opens this form. So now when we preview this, since we changed all of the shapes for these six, you can see these are all of the different options that you have. Generally, I would recommend going with one of these versus doing it like this, but if you had a reason to do this, you totally could. Okay, but we have a lot of checkboxes here and it would take forever to go through and double click or right click on all of these and individually select the options. So I don't know if you remember at the beginning, but I had this right sidebar that I closed out of. I'm going to go ahead and open that back up. So this is going to be the little page icon with the corner turned. And when you hover over it, it says set the order for tabbing between fields and sort the list of fields. So I want to open up this right side sidebar again. And you can see that these different options line up with our checkboxes. If you click them, it will select them on the page, or if you click them on the page, it will select them in our menu. I know that this I have oily skin option is our first one, and I want to find where this last one is. Okay, this is other two. So what I'm going to do in this list 
is select either the first or last one. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to hold down shift and now select the first one. So that now has all of these fields selected. I'm going to then right click, go to properties, then under options, under checkbox style, I'm going to click check and this will change it to be consistent between all of them. I'm going to do the same thing for these checkboxes. You can also hold down shift while you're selecting them on the page. And I'm going to change these two checks as well. All right, so now let's take care of our radio fields. With radio fields, typically how these work is that only one of them can be selected at a time. When we preview our form, you can see that if we select any of them on the page, it unchecks everything else. This is not how we want this to function. We want this to be one set, this to be another set, and then each of these questions down here to be their own sets. So what we're going to do is open up our tab again, and we are going to select these. So you can see that these radio buttons are classified under a group. This group is going to determine which of these go together. Since all of these are under the same group, that is why when you select anything on the page, it deselects everything else. So we're going to go through and change these. We can leave these first ones as whatever the default group is. Then on these, we're going to double click and we will just rename the ones that go together. So we'll make this group 16. You could also name it what the question is or something similar if that is easier for you. So I'm going to go through all of these and edit those groups. If you have a super long form, I would definitely recommend using the question or field name or information to identify these because now when we open up this sidebar, we'll be able to see which of these go under which questions. So if you accidentally do anything wrong or anything is under the wrong group, you'll know what it is instead of it just saying group 15 or group 16. So now our form should be done. But what you're going to want to do before you send this to anyone is go ahead and preview this and try to fill out the form yourself. We know that those text boxes are working. We know that our check marks are all working and we can just go through and test all of these radio buttons. Oops, it looks like something there is messed up. Uh, good, so this is why we test this. So for some reason, this question at the beginning and this question in the middle are linked. Um, so we're going to exit and see what happened there. This one is still under group 15, and I believe that's what this one is called. Yep. So we're going to rename this with the questions. And now when we do this again, we can see that that part is working. This one is still linked, so we'll go back and we will edit these. We'll preview again. So it is super important to test your form out yourself because if someone is filling this out, they are not going to have the capabilities most likely to change these fields themselves. So that will turn into more of a customer service nightmare uh, than a help for you. So now that we have those radio buttons fixed, it looks like everything else is working properly, which is great. So then when you send this form to someone, if you have this signature field, they will be able to fill this with their digital signature. I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this tutorial, but this is what it would look like to the end user. 
So now that we know that all of this information is working, our form is set up correctly, we can go ahead and exit this preview and then we can just save. And that is how you prepare a form using Adobe Acrobat Pro. If this was helpful, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.